818-715-815. Hello, good afternoon, and you're very welcome to Liveline. 51551 is our text number. It was 100 days exactly before February the 1st that we got our first call about uh, the deposit return scheme, you know, the uh, beverage bottles and cans. Now every one of them has a tax on it of 15 cent or 25 cent. And uh, the, the 100 days call beforehand that came in was people wondering what it was all about, especially shopkeepers. Well, Kieran, by the way, I'll be talking to somebody later on in the programme who travelled... 1,000 kilometres to bring back the, the uh, two plastic bottles. Two bottles of water she bought, and she paid 650, but she said nearly killed her. But she travelled 1,000 kilometres eventually to get her uh, 25 cent back on each bottle, believe it or not. But Kieran Foley, uh, of deposit return, it's a government, well, a government quango, for want of a better word. It's enforceable, they're the law. Um, he said today, talking to Claire, that last Sunday was a fantastic day because two million beverage bottles and cans were uh, returned. It was our best day ever by a long shot. Well, work out the math. Five million beverage bottles and cans are sold every day. Every single one of them now has to have the tax on it of 15 or 25 cents. That's why people are paying uh, more for bottled water and cans of Coke and cans of beer than they ever were. The five million of them are sold every day. Remember, the tax is put on by this is collected by the supplier or the wholesaler if it comes in from a different country. So the supplier gives that money to deposit return. They don't keep it. So I, we have calls people saying, "Oh, the little shopkeeper out by, he wouldn't, uh, he's no facility to take the the bottles back. Therefore, he or she is getting the deposit. They are not." They are paying the deposit before they pass it on to you. It's the deposit return scheme that will get the unused and the unreturned uh, bottles and cans, i.e. money. So uh, they're saying the best day ever so far was 2 million last Sunday. 5 million are sold on average every day. That's 3 million on their best day, which are not returned on average. Multiply that over the year. Uh, By the way, that's 600,000 a day of non, uh, non-collected non deposits that people have paid. And over the year, return, uh, this uh, new government organisation, they will collect on that basis 219 million of unredeemed deposits. They get, a, every, every 25 or 15 cents you pay, if you don't bring back the bottle, it goes back to... Not your little shopkeeper. It goes back to the organisation set up to run the scheme. So it goes back into their coffers. Two hundred and nineteen million on average they will get uh, each year. Last Sunday they got on their best day ever. They got six hundred thousand euro effectively back into their coffers. We'll be talking to the, um, those uh, that that caller again as we have been doing uh, later on in the program. Gemma, good afternoon. Air air rage won't abate. What yeah. hap- what happens? I don't. Well, my mum passed away in June last year and about a week after she passed away we got the bill in which I went and paid. Uh, 20 euro. She had a little mobile was 20 euro every month. Okay. And uh, of course I didn't realise that uh, you're paying in advance all the time so we were 20 euro in credit. Well done, well done, well done. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the next month then we just kept getting um, the, the, an invoice in, if you call it a statement, I suppose, saying she was in credit. Okay. So yeah. I emailed them. I explained that she'd passed away. They sent me a bereavement form. I filled that in. They sent me a reply email saying, sorry for your loss. Thanks okay. for returning the form. I think I have that now about three times. Okay, so your um, your your point is, Gemma, that keeps uh, I you're not fighting to get the fifty three euro back at this stage. You just want to stop them no, wasting I everyone's want, I don't time. I do want the letter coming in. Too upsetting. Yeah. So every month comes in with my mum's name and address on it, despite numerous emails, phone calls to lovely people, all assuring yeah. me, no, it'll never happen again. And but yes, I got one in last week. Okay. <laughs> And what did it so, with, like? Where, where? God rest your mother. But where will the credit go? Well, I did ask them if they could send it to me as executor of a will, 
but it was so complicated I said you know yeah, what yeah. Just let's just forget about that write it off keep it please just don't send any more letters well please no. well not being facetious but your, your mother God rest her I'm sure is above in heaven um, <laughs> what, what, what she can do with the 53 euro from no Aaron I don't Dale. know what she'll do with the 53 either Joe she's up, she's <laughs> up to the sky and, and you say there's simply no way of stopping them that's the no. problem no, no matter what you I've do. spoken to about six different people now that all assure me, no, it'll never happen again. I'm oh, very sorry. Yeah, but it, does it definitely won't again. come next month and it comes again. Okay. Okay, Jim. Yeah. Well, God rest no your way. mother. But it's another yeah. interesting angle on air. Michaela Hillary, again, unfortunately, someone passed away. What happened, Michaela? Hi, Joe. Um, well, my husband passed away last year in March. And um, in uh, April or the early June, I um, again filled out a bereavement form and informed AIR and um, informed them that I wouldn't be keeping on my husband's package. Um, But I did say, would they contact me maybe to discuss a different package for my own son? And uh, I didn't hear anything back from them. And uh, and I found and then they said someone would come take me back and that went on for a while and then I was paying his bill which was quite large so I contacted okay. him and said look I'll give you to this Friday if you don't contact me back and I got a young guy on the phone and he said well my personal opinion I feel the onus is on you to phone every day so after that I didn't contact them again I went with a different provider um, and so anyway this year in February I got a letter from Stubbs Gazette. Oh, for the amount God's of eight hundred and sixty seven euros oh. um, in my name, uh, not my husband's name in my name, so I contacted them and I spoke to a guy and he and I said i 've never given permission to have the account changed to my name yeah uh, i don 't have any debt with them i 've never used any of their services since last June, yeah. and so he told me to contact them. he could see from his paperwork but there'd been no uh, permission for an account form changeover. Okay. And so he said, will you contact them back, but email them, uh, which I did. And then um, that went on for several. They acknowledged the email, and then someone did contact me and said they were looking into it. Mm-hmm. And that went on for a couple of weeks. And then finally, on the day of his anniversary, a girl found and said to she was pleased to inform me that my case file was now closed. And no further action would be taken. And I remember just having, before she got off the phone, because she was quick to do so, I said, mm-hmm. if this isn't personal, but I said, the way you've handled this, I said, anyone can make a mistake, yeah, and mistakes yeah, can yeah. be made. But the stress of suddenly sending someone a letter for that amount through the post and no acknowledgement of your mistake. I said, you've made a mistake, but I said, you're not apologetic about it. It's almost like you've done me a favour by, you know, closing the file. I just felt that they dealt with this in a horrendous way. And I don't think they were apologetic. And yesterday, Michaela, and indeed the day before, we heard a number of people say, when I rang up about my husband's bill or my partner's bill, they said, no, we can't deal with you. We can only deal with the account holder. They've actually put you in Stubbs Gazette, so to speak. No, yeah, no, it's come in my name. And, by the way, they, what was, it was, and what she said was that my bereavement form went to the wrong department. That was her explanation for the error they made, that my bereavement. But when I charged my husband's phone up, they'd been billing him monthly. So although the debt was accruing under his phone number and his email, it, the actual bill came out in my name. Um. Where do you stand now? You don't. If you, if you, if I, I don't know how. Well, I, I, don't I, I would previously. I, pre, I know. I agree. I previously advised people. Would you not write to them? Would you not send a registered letter? And we're discovering over the last few days that people who took that advice didn't get anywhere either. The registered letter wasn't even acknowledged, which it should be. Um, no. Well, I can only assume now that because she said they've dealt with it, it was their error. It went to the wrong department. I can only assume that there is no further action to be taken against me because it's their error. I'm hoping so. I do actually probably need to contact Stubbs Gazette yeah, and it's not, find it's, out for sure. But it's not nice getting a letter from Stubbs Gazette. Oh, and air, air know that. Yeah. 
And there'd be no previous correspondence to the house. This just came out in um, February this year. That Outrageous. just arrived on As the As I said yesterday, this yeah. all reliance by air on Stubbs Gazette for, mi- for minor infractions, alleged minor infractions. Yesterday, by the way, McKenna, you might have heard, I read out some a member of staff sent us in the round robin email, Oliver Looms, oh, the yeah. CEO of Air, sent around. And among other things he said, well, he had a go with us, I suppose, he said, um, the majority of media coverage has centred on aspects not directly related to details of the case. Comrade made serious and incorrect allegations against Air. Okay, and then he he goes on to say, the, the this doesn't mis, this doesn't make for a, he was talking about we've improved significantly. Thus, this there's no evidence of that, and I'm sure there is on our screen, but in your in our, a lot of our listeners' lives there isn't. However, that doesn't make for a great headline. The portrayal of these events in the media has been disappointing. Now, Comreg have sent us back a rocket of a statement uh, saying, air. You did not raise objections to the facts underlying any of the cases before the court. During the course of the hearing, this is from Comreg, basically telling Oliver, you're wrong, and being diplomatic. During the course of the hearing, reference was made to an onboarding manual used by AIR for new customer service agents. This manual was provided to Comreg by AIR in the course of a formal investigation into AIR's complaints, handling processes and procedures. It formed part, a part of the book of disclosure in the prosecution, i.e. AIR would have been, been aware of it before the court case, and then they just finished with this stinger from Comreg. AIR was convicted in each of the ten cases before the court. So they're throwing uh, Mr. Loom's um, statement into the bin, saying it's it's wrong. They knew all this, and it's no point saying afterwards that it was... And by the way, in Mr. Loom's statement, and I said it yesterday, he, he, he baldly states that um, uh, Comreg made serious and incorrect allegations, but he doesn't say how they were incorrect. He doesn't say how the... Um, he does go on to say the, la- the language used by air may have been, might have been a little bit ambiguous, to say the least. Uh, Michaela will keep in touch. John Moore. John, good afternoon. Hi, Joe. What, what happened? Well, mine goes back a bit now. Uh, it was 2015, 2016, when uh, I had a uh, run-in with air over my um, account. I, I changed provider. Yeah, as a and, lot of people do, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I got my <clears throat> uh, letter of notice of termination, which was uh, the 5th of January in 2016, so that okay. you know that they'll switch off your supply and all of that. I'd switched over. The number had been ported over to the new company. Everything was grand. Then I started getting in a bill for 2783 mm-hmm. from there, and I was trying to figure out what the hell is that for. I sorted everything out. The account was paid in full. Okay. So I started ring, ringing in then to their... Uh, uh, the free phone number and I rang in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times, spoke to nine different people and on each occasion I was told, sorry John, that's going to be sorted out, don't worry about it, you won't yeah. get it again. But it kept coming out. So I said, oh to hell, I'm not going to bother me Barney anymore with that. I've done enough, I've done everything I can. And uh, the next thing was then I um, uh, on my text to my your, phone your, your, line, your line disappeared there John but basically what Air did again they sent it to a they sent this this bill of 27 euro uh, house, uh, I don't know what it was at that stage but it wasn't far off 27 yeah. they sent it to a, a debt collection company that came after a you a debt collection company that came after me and they were texting me and phoning me and all that type of thing now I chose to ignore them I said I, I got back onto Air I said, listen, I never owed anyone any money. Yeah. I said, this is your problem, not my problem. So I wrote out a letter of explanation, detailed everything to them, and I sent it in. And uh, then I, the account was sorted out. So uh, then I decided, I said, what am I going to do here? My, my data has been given to yeah. a debt collecting company. Yeah. So I contacted um, the... Uh, uh, the, um, Comreg or whatever. Dad, dad, no, data oh, protection. protection. Well done, well done. Yeah, I contacted them and I said in the letter what had happened. So anyway, they said, yeah, we'll take it on. So they took it on and they contacted there. And then uh, I said in my letter to her that I demand, first of all, a letter of apology and also that confirmation that all my data has been taken back from the debt collection company. And uh, I finally got a letter then. I had to write twice looking for it. 
but I got a letter from her uh, apologising yeah. and confirming that all my data had been taken back and that it wouldn't go any further. Unfortunately, okay. the first letter I got wasn't signed. Okay, and you look for a signature. You sent it back looking so for a signature. I sent it back. Now, but tell me, John, I want to go back to this debt collection agency. Yeah. How yeah. often were they contacting you on behalf of AIR for this €27? Euro? Oh, it was a regular thing. Well, were they ringing you? Were they sending you letters? Were they oh, they ring me. And I finally got a letter from them then on the 7th of April, 2016. That's when I got the final letter from them. And when I got that, I hit the roof. I said, that's it. I'm, I'm going to take action on this. I ignored it because, of, Jesus, I don't know. Oh, anyone, anyone. Okay. What have they contacted me for? <clears throat> well, you're, so, well, um, people normally get frightened when they see debt collection agencies, John. That's what, yeah. that's what they're banking on, pardon the pun. Yeah. That's but why I Stubbs knew. Gazette, it's the name. I'm sure those people yeah. in Stubbs are gorgeous. Uh, and they're all Aquarians, but, but very gentle me, people. But um, it's yeah, the but name that frightened me. So much about it, Joe. Yeah, it's what annoyed me so much about it was that my information had been given to these people. Now, I'm of an age where it doesn't really matter to me. I'm not looking for loans. I don't need money from okay. anybody. But if you were a younger person, your name is on it's that for the, for the rest. Okay, and you might not know how it got there. Okay, John, Brian Morrissey. Brian, you had a, a positive experience in an air shop, which people do have, but you can't pay your bill in an air shop, can you? Uh, no. No, you can't. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with air right through back to the time that they were called Meteor. Yeah, what they which is quite a while ago. I don't know if you're ever called Meteor, but anyway, okay, they might have. A well, sorry, well, okay. I mean, let's, but you're, sorry, you're, let's just say your the same is, shop just changed names. Okay, and you say when you go into the shop, which which we had a call about this on Monday, the people in the shop are all Aquarians. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're very pleasant to deal with. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I I find that even though uh, you know I'm sort of advanced but, age but yeah, I and uh, they teach you which 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 is pardon? which is great. But have you ever gone in with a complaint about your bill? Yes, and they say that the shop were very nice, and yeah. they say, look, they really haven't, they haven't got the authority to exactly. ring on my behalf yeah. from the shop. So they can't. And they give me a, they gave me a number to contact. Okay, but the air shop, um, the air shop on the high street, as they call it, it cannot yeah. deal with the major problem with most of our, well, sorry, with many, which many of our customers have, and that is difficulties with their bill, and that's under, that's what they decided. The shops don't deal with those issues. Sure, they don't. No, uh, okay. but, but I mean, I've had that 